now. Hi everybody, it's Franny and we're back with the 3-2 Carrera. Today it's going to be a big day. Today we're going to get the engine started. So in the previous episodes we hooked everything up in the engine bay here and then also underneath. So hopefully get everything hooked up correctly. I suppose I'll be the first to know. You guys will be a very close second. We've got the clutch hooked up. We've got the shifter hooked up. We're all set here I think. I have nine quarts of oil in the car as well and I've rotated it through a couple of times to make sure there's no no binding, nothing's really messed up with the engine. Now I'm going to be following Wayne Dempsey's process on how to get this engine going again, only because it's been sitting pretty much for a year, which is not a huge amount of time, but it's enough that I really want to crank it over, get the oil flowing through it first, and then fire it up. We don't have a brand new engine, we didn't rebuild it, so I don't have to go through some crazy process in order to, to you know, break the engine in, but I do want to get the oil flowing through it first and make sure that all of our connections are good, our oil feels good, um, gas is flowing properly before I actually, you know, light the flame on this thing. So kind of that's figurative. All right, well, we got a bunch to do just to sort of set up and get it going. So let's get to it. The first thing I'm going to do is actually put some gas in the car. We drained the tank completely when I was doing those front hoses and I pulled that strainer out of the bottom of the tank and everything. So it's completely dry in there. I went out and got some fresh gasoline today. I'm going to put probably maybe three gallons in. I think that's probably plenty. Any more than that. And if we have any problems, I'd have to drain it all back out again. Well, you see that little flap down there? I was hoping that this snout on my my gas can would be long enough to push that in, but it really isn't. So I'm going to use this guy with a long tube on it here. It's like this. I'm going to stick that in there and I think that's going to make our life a lot easier. Well, that's about three gallons. I think that'll work. You know, it's funny, I was filling it up and I'm hearing all these gurgling noises, so I wanted to stop and just make certain that it wasn't pouring all over the place. So let me take a look really quick underneath, just make sure everything is okay. Everything looks really good under here. Those are the two connections back there, the return line and the line out of the pump. There's the line out of the tank into the pump. Everything looks completely dry underneath here. Our seal on the plug on the bottom looks good. I think we're fine with the gas tank. Put our gas cap back on. Next, I'm going to hook up the negative terminal on the battery. Now, we also have our fuel pump fuse is still out. We don't want the fuel pump running just yet. We're just going to be cranking over the engine a bit to get the oil flowing through, so no fuel at this point. But we will need, of course, to have the battery hooked up. So let's go ahead and do that. And this wire is for the battery tender. All right. All right, that's pretty tight. Good. Yay. In addition, Wayne suggests that you put your battery on a battery charger like this, and he said up to 10 amps. The only one I've got is this old crappy one that's six amps, but it'll be better than nothing because you're gonna be cranking the engine over a bit and you wanna maintain the charge in your battery. So the battery really hasn't done a thing for a year. I've had it on the tender the whole time, so it should be topped off. My tender looked good, it was green, but I do want to hook up our battery charger just to give it a little more love and help in between the cycles of starting to keep the battery from going crazy. All right, we've got our battery charger ready to go. We're really close at this point. Our first step in restarting the engine here is just gonna be to crank it over to get the oil flowing through it so I don't want it firing. And a really good way to stop it from firing is to remove this little DME relay that's down here. It's pretty simple. We're just going to unplug it. This is our DME relay. It's actually under the front seat, which I have out of the car. We can just pull the plug off the back of it. No big deal. There we go. It's a very important relay, this. The car definitely will not run without that connected. I've got the car all the way on the ground. I've got the ramps out. And then behind them, I've got rubber blocks. And that's just in case something very bad happens. The car's on fire, I've gotta get it out of the garage. Then I'll be able to stop it on the driveway here, which would be a good thing. And in addition, I've got two different fire extinguishers down here, a halotron and an element. 
We should be all set. We're gonna be looking at our oil pressure and our oil light. As I turn the car on, you can see our oil light is on. We have no pressure, obviously. But what we're gonna do is crank this for up to 30 seconds or so. I'm gonna be using a clock over there on the wall to time myself. And I wanna see this light go out. All right, here we go. our oil light gone out. That's great. That's good to see. And look at our oil pressure is coming up a little bit too. Look at that. Isn't that great? We're coming up on our 30 second mark here. So oil pressure up. That's awesome. All right. There we go. So that's 30 seconds. I don't want to run the starter any longer than that. I'm going to give it a minute or so to kind of just breathe and cool down and chill out a little bit. But we got our oil light off and we got our oil pressure to come up a little bit. I'm going to repeat that one more time just to make sure that we've got plenty of oil. And then the next step will be to hook everything up, all the electrical stuff, our DME relay on and see if we can get this thing to fire. While we're waiting for that starter to cool down a little bit, really good idea to just sort of take another gander in here, make sure everything looks good. We don't have any oil flying all over the place. We've got oil connections down here. Down there, our little Carrera tensioner oil connections down there. We just wanna make sure that we don't have any oil going everywhere. It all looks good and dry there. Same thing over here on the other side. A little hard to see down in there, but if there was any oil flying anywhere, it, you'd definitely see it. A little hard to see down through the plug wires and such, but it's down in there. All right, I don't see anything. There's our new oil sensor and the connections to it. You can see the little pink on it. So everything looks good there. Let's look underneath. Looking at the oil return lines underneath here. See if there's anything bad going on with them. I don't see any oil anywhere. It looks very dry under here. Over on the other side as well. All looks good underneath there. I don't see any issues. Out here with the head. We're just double checking everything. Over on the other side. Still looks very dry. There's our, our big oil tube there that we hooked up. Want to make sure that that's dry. It's dry on both ends there. All right, yeah, that looks really good. All right, we're gonna repeat the same thing we did. We're just gonna run it for about 30 seconds just to get some oil flowing through it again. Here we go. There's the oil light out, that's good. There's our oil pressure coming up, look at that. Oh, that looks great, huh? 15 seconds, 25 seconds. All right, and 30 seconds. Well, that's looking really good. We got our oil pressure to come up. We don't have any leaks under the car. Everything looks really good here. So next is kind of the moment of truth. I'm gonna reconnect our relay here and put in the fuse for the fuel pump and uh, <laughs> crank this thing and see if it starts up. So, all right, well, wish me luck. All right, well, here's the moment of truth. We're all set. We've got gas in the car. We've got our relays hooked up. Our fuse is all set. <sighs> I'll push the clutch in a little bit. All right, you ready? I know, it's kind of scary. All right, here we go. It'll take a little bit because it doesn't have any gas in any of the lines. Technically it's running. It's not super happy, but it's running. Make sure to idle, there we go. Okay, well let's take a look in the back and see how we're doing. I'm using the sniffer and it smells fine. 
Now we do have a little bit of oil here, that's to be expected. I threw some Marvel Mystery Oil in each one of the cylinders just to make sure that it was lubricated well because it had been, you know, a year. And it's kind of running. turn it off so let's figure out what's going on yeah we got a bit of a drip up there and that looks like that is probably gas so I better double check that before we go any further so let's go ahead and raise the car up and take a look and see what we've got under there yep you can see the gas there you can see it on that boot as well and looking up in there you see that yeah little we'll drip there I can see our fuel lines coming out of the tunnel are just leaking a little bit. So that connection and that one there are the two connections we need to get tightened up just a tad. The cable running below those two fuel lines is the clutch cable. It'll be interesting getting access to that. It was a lot easier when the engine wasn't in the car, but all right, never fear, we'll get it done. And while we're checking fuel lines, let's check the lines up front here, make sure they're dry. Those look good. That little shiny bit you see there is just uh, silicone, leftover silicone grease from the grommets. The hoses look good. They go up over the thing there, and here we go. Here's the connection to the tank, the connection to the fuel pump, from the fuel pump to the tank itself. And that all looks good. I'm not seeing any leakage here. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. Well, that clutch cable is just super in the way. I can't even get a wrench on those connections down to there because the clutch cable is in the way. So it's not that difficult to pull the clutch cable out. And it's gonna be my first step. I just need to disconnect it up front here and then you just pretty much pull it out the rear. It's really not that bad. So let me go ahead and get it disconnected. We'll pull the clutch cable out and see if we've got any better access under there. I've disconnected the clutch on the other end, disconnected the clevis, and then screwed the clevis off the end as well as the little lock nut. So we should be able to pull our clutch cable straight through and out. There we go. There we go. And that's that. It's actually really easy to get the clutch cable out of this car. It's really not a too big of a bummer. Well, that gives us a lot more access underneath there. Let's see if we can get under there and tighten those fittings. Well, these are 17 and 14. So let me see if I can get this one tight. It's gonna have to go that way. Okay, and then you, all right. Had you for a second there. A little more tightness on that one. So that one looks like it's dry. Let's get to the other one. The other one's a bit of a bear because I've got more stuff in the way. End in it. So maybe I can get this on. That's on. That's tightening a little bit. Okay, that tightened a little bit. I think that's pretty much it. I don't see any more drips up there. It looks pretty dry, but we won't know for certain until we start the car again. So let's lower the car back down. We'll start it. And if we've got no leaks, we can go ahead and put our clutch cable back in and we'll be right back where we started. Yay. <laughs> let's give this a try again. See how we do. Yeah, it's still leaking, so that's not good. All right, well, get back under there and see what we got. They're definitely both still leaking. Shoot fire. Well, gosh, I really do need to get a wrench in there. I really do need this thing kind of out of the way. Well, it's not the end of the world. I mean, I can 
Go ahead and jack up the transmission here, and then pull this yoke off. I can do that, it's not the end of the world, and get up there and figure out why those connections will not seal. See if there's any problem with them. Certainly this one that's leaking, this return line, is one of the ones that we replace. So we replace the soft line and this, this line as well. Okay, well let me go ahead and set up. I'll get the transmission jacked up. I won't bore you with all of that. We'll go ahead and remove this and get those tightened back up. Well, I'm gonna loosen these guys back up again. I'm actually gonna loosen this up first and then re-tighten it, I think. There, there it's leaking. And tighten this guy back up again. Uh. Like that. Okay, and we'll do our other one here as well. Yeah, there we go. Loosen that guy up a bit. Is that nice and loose like that? Let's go back and tighten it again. Okay, that's pretty tight. So I think what I'm gonna do is go ahead and remount the transmission back up just to be safe. This engine jiggles around quite a bit, and if it fell off the lift, it would be absolutely disastrous. So let's go ahead and put this big crossbar back in and tighten things up. I won't torque it all down yet until we're super certain that everything's good. All right, I think that's tight enough at least just to test it. Let me go ahead and lower the car again. We'll start it again and see how we did. All right, well, we'll give this a try again. All right, well, I'm not seeing any leaking. That's a really good thing. That's awesome. I think we're good down there. Let's go ahead and, oh, let me turn this off. Shut everything down. Okay, and now what I'm gonna do is raise the car back up. We'll go back and torque all those bolts on the mounts. Don't wanna forget to do that. We have to put our clutch cable back in, hook up our throttle linkage, which I just connected that as well, and just kind of put everything back to where it was. Well, that was a lot of fuss just to get the fuel line straightened out again. So I think what I wanna do at this point is go ahead and lower the car back down again. Let's start it up and run it a little bit and see how it's doing. We'll also need to add a little bit of oil. We only put in nine quarts and we should be somewhere around 10 and a half ish. So we'll probably have about a quart and a half to go, but we can't check the oil until the engine is warm. So let's go ahead and lower it down, get the engine started again, see where we are. smooth is it you kind of see the deck lid jiggling back and forth here I don't know it almost sounds like we have maybe one cylinder that's not super happy I don't know huh well let it warm up a little bit and see how it does it has settled into a nice pretty solid idle actually but it still feels a little bit well they're speeding up and just slow down Huh. Well, we can't really go for a ride. 
ride because I don't have the axles and stuff. bypass. That's definitely it. All right, well our surging is from the little bypass guy here. I think it just has a bad connection on it. I did replace it. It's new. I could go put the old one back on because I know it works. But it could also just be a bad, like the wiring could be a little bit weird on it as well. I'll have to take a look at that. Let's go ahead and check our oil. There, that's the drop I was hoping for. Yeah, that's what you should hear, a little drop like that. Yep, I'd say our oil's a bit low. Let's go ahead and put in a couple of quarts. All right, that's enough. Well, looks like we do have a couple of little oil leaks. There's one there, a little drip there, and there. Looks like coming from underneath here, we'll have to find the one on this side. So, not sure exactly where it's coming from, but we'll have to figure that out. All in all, pretty successful day. We did have a few issues. We had our fuel leakage issue back there and this thing is surging kind of weirdly as well. I think that's probably gonna be the wiring to the bypass valve, but I'll have to double check it. I think there might be a small short in it or something. Who knows? We do have a couple of small oil leaks we need to look after as well. So we've got quite a bit more to go. Also, the axles are out of the car, so I need to get them back in before we can go for a drive. And the transmission is pretty difficult to get into gear, which tells me that it's way out of adjustment. And that's okay, that's kind of what I expected. I asked them to go in and readjust all of the gates and stuff, and yeah, so that, that totally makes sense to me. So we got a bit more to go. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please please give it a thumbs up. Questions or comments, go ahead and leave them down below and I'll get right to them. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, then please do hit the little bell next to it to be notified because we've got a lot more to go, obviously, on this to get this done. Thanks again. And as always, a very special thank you to our Patreon supporters. Until next time, safe travels. Bye.